All right, everybody. We are now live and we are recording. Welcome to today's AI webinar, Site Selector, Data Production, and Website Development in the Upper Peninsula. My name is Jennifer Bruin, and I'm the project coordinator of the MSU EDA University Center for Regional Economic Innovation. REI is supported by the U.S. Department of Commerce, Economic Development Administration, and the Michigan State Housing and Development Authority. It was established in the fall of 2011 to support the identification, creation, and development of innovative economic development strategies that may yield high growth entrepreneurship and job creation in distressed regions of Michigan. Each year, the REI University Center selects and supports several innovative economic development projects. These projects are led by experts in the field or by faculty at Michigan universities or colleges. They are supported through small mini-grants to offset any costs associated with completion of the initiatives and research. Today, Professor Jennifer James Meslow from Northern Michigan University will present her Upper Peninsula Site Selector website project. Jennifer is an associate professor and coordinator of the Masters of Public Administration program at NMU. Her project included community partners, faculty, and graduate students, and involved gathering data to develop a marketing program to attract businesses to the Upper Peninsula region. Jennifer, are you ready? Yes. OK. okay. Fantastic. Please join me in welcoming Jennifer James Meslow and her team. Fantastic. Thank you all for joining us. I really appreciate it. We are here with our students in uh, NMU's um, one of our uh, learning resource buildings. And so we've also got some students that are participating off-site. So bear with us if we have any kind of technical issues. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, as you can see, the, printer, the presenters in order of appearance, I'm going to just say a few words. And then each of the students are going to talk about the counties that they actually worked on. So first, I wanted to just give you a brief description of the project. As Jen mentioned, this is an economic and development data marketing project. And this was a wonderful partnership. And it was an initiative that we worked with the Upper Peninsula Collaborative Development Council and the Lake Superior Community Partnership. And basically, those two organizations came together and really determined that over the coming years, it was really important for marketing materials to be developed in order to attract business. So what we were really looking at is how, as the MPA program here at NMU, could we partner with this innovative project? And so LSCP was really looking at a regional-wide effort. And they wanted to create digital and hard copy materials, basically what you think of sort of those high-glossy collateral materials that you have in a PR campaign. And that's really where a lot of this started. And so LSDP, as you can see from the template that you're looking at, they were responsible for having this created. And so we really um, were able to leverage some wonderful connectivity. So they really worked on the jazzy and the glitz and the marketing, and we worked on the data collection. So I think they got the, the really fun part. We got to run around and look at the numbers and travel around the UP. So that was fun, too. Um, so basically what we did was we identified that there was this need for these marketing, uh, marketing pieces. And so these marketing pieces would be geared towards site selectors. And those site selectors are the ones that if you were relocating business or you were um, expanding business or starting a new ent enterprise, they, they would be the ones that would come in and they would evaluate a community. So we really wanted all of that information that those site selectors would really want or need and have access to. The situation um, in the UP is such that with economic developers, their staff time is very minimal. And so as far as the resources they have to allocate to a project like this, and so that's how this research um, collaboration came to be. So the total project encompassed uh, 25 spreadsheets, and there were 1,200 data elements. And so the MPA students actually collected 11 uh, data points on 11 of the 25 tables. And the remaining were collected by another research team. Um, this is the data collected. This is actually the a listing of all of the 11 tables that we collected. And as you can see, it's in real small print, so I apologize for that. But I just wanted to give you a sense of what was the information that the students were really looking at. So um, table A, households, median income, 
distribution, workforce education, you know, we looked at tax structures, we looked at the number of unions in a, a community or a county, we looked at um, all the taxation, we looked at permitting, environmental issues, we looked at what were the new businesses coming into a community, and so that kind of gives you an idea or an example of a lot of the information that we looked at. So the way this project began, it started in fall of 2013, and so that would have been in about August, and we had 15 MPA students in our community development class. And one of the things that we immediately came up against was the difficulty in identifying valid sources. And so one of the things that we realized was that in other parts of Michigan and other parts of the country, a lot of the information that we were trying to collect is very readily accessible from an online or internet access. We didn't find that to necessarily be the case within the counties in the UP. And so that was one issue. Another issue were, was competing sources. We found multiple sources and the information wasn't necessarily always the same across different sources. And then just locating it in general. So in the fall, the initial uh, data collection project took about 50 hours per county and so that sort of gives you an idea of the initial phase. The second phase was this past semester that we're in, the winter, and we had a second group of students. Some of them overlapped, some of them didn't, and there were 16 students that participated in a rural community development class. And through this, we wound up traveling, Mom, myself as the faculty member and the students that represented or worked with each county, and we traveled to those counties. And what we looked at was meeting with those organizations, meeting with those economic developers, and really reviewing this data. One of the things that we realized was a lot of times data is collected about these rural communities, but it's never proofed with them or it's never reviewed with them, and it just gets printed. And at the end of the day, they're kind of left going, wow, who did this? And, you know, this doesn't really look right. And so we actually wound up with quite a lot of revision after we had those county meetings, I think significantly more than we anticipated. And so this project has had multiple phases. So one was the initial data collection, one was the reviewing of the data, one was traveling to the counties and meeting with the economic developers, and then additional revision. And it, as you can see, the total project worked out to be approximately 85 hours per county. And when you multiply that by the number of counties that we had, it was quite an extensive project. We were just shy of 1,200 student hours. My time is not included in that. I don't think I want to add that up. <laughs> but this, once this um, data is collected and we've gone through all of the revisions and we've put together the um, information and we've utilized LSDP's wonderful marketing materials, then this information is going to be housed on the Center for Rural Community and Economic Development's website. And so with that, I will actually have Megan Nimi come up and she will talk about Alger County. And so each of the students is going to focus on the demographics, the strengths, and the areas for advancement. And these are the, or, I'm sorry, these are the areas that the students determined were best um, within their respective counties that they worked with. Okay, Elder County is approximately just over 900 square miles and has approximately 11 persons per square mile, so it's a low dense population and the population is just over 9,500. The total labor force is just over 3,400 and the unemployment rate is smaller than the national average of 5.7 percent with about 44 percent that have over a high school education. The median income will be 3,800 or 38,000. Sorry, Alger County is very has many strengths, um, specifically in tourism. They hold a lot of national parks. They are they are known as the gateway to Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore, Grand Island National Recreational Area, and the Hiawatha National Forest. They're Tourism is very high during the summer with various hiking and biking trails as well as a lot of waterways. They attract thousands of tourism every tourist every summer and then as well as in the winter they have miles of snowmobile trails. 
they have a low crime rate and their commercial transportation routes um, that allow for need of paper to export and timber products. They have a lot of raw materials with a lot of public land as well. Areas for advancement um, include the tourism. Uh, they can improve just in their extensive outdoor activities. They have a ton of public land and they can advertise more in larger cities with the collaboration of Picture of Rocks National Lakeshore, their main tourist attraction. Um, and then they also can improve in their snowmobile rentals. Nina Paper is their largest commercial and they work closely with them in grants and education. And we'll give it off to Troy. Hello. I'm going to be looking at Barraga County. Looking at the demographics, uh, the population has been fairly steady around 8,000 uh, and projected for 2020. It's uh, set to be around 7,900, so it's been pretty stable. Uh, the number of households has increased from 1990 to 2010 from 3,060 to 3,300. Similarly, the median household incomes increased uh, from 19,000 to approximately 40,000. That's owing to a change in income distribution in that time period. There are about 1,000 less households making under 15,000 and they've seen increases in 50,000 to 75,000 and 75,000 and above. Uh, that might be due to uh, inflation issues. And in terms of education attainment, um, you see the large number of the population, about 40%, has an education level of uh, 12 years uh, high school. 24% have had some college, and um, about 17% are have an associate's degree or above. Looking at the major employers by group, you see that uh, there's a mix between office, production, administration, sales, a mix between college education positions and high school positions. When you look at Barry County Strengths, uh, it has a rural community college named Keweenaw Bay Ojibwa Community College. It's currently fairly small with 80 students enrolled and a graduating class of six. It has numerous cultural sites um, such as Calumet Theater, Keweenaw Symp Symphony, the Carnegie Museum, Honka Finnish Homestead, uh, other historical museums. It also hosts a number of cultural events such as the Lake Trout Festival, uh, an event known as the Lumberjack Days, the KBIC Pow Wow, and the Fall Harvest Festival. One of the main attractions to the county is the outdoor recreational activities that it holds. Um, there are numerous places available for other outdoor activities, such as the Township Park. Uh, Mount Arvon is the tallest mountain in the Upper Peninsula area. There's Little Mountain Point Abayi. I might be messing with the pronunciation there. And there's also numerous waterfalls to explore. They have seen small growth in employment in mining and construction from 1990 to now. And there is also a moderately sized presence of unions and employee-owned businesses in the county. Some areas of advancement to look at. Uh, the Berger County could focus on continued increases in mining and construction. They could also expand their outdoor recreation activities. Um, I think it would be important in a small sparsely populated county to explore entry level and service jobs for some members of the community there. And they should also focus on the advancement of the rural community college. Many um, studies have shown that rural community colleges help increase the economic development in the area. Um, further, they could explore the concept of employee owned enterprises such as American Gas and Welding, which is an employee owned business in the community. They should also expand the presence of the Upper Peninsula culture and Native American culture in the county since both are already established. And that is kind of the direction that Barrier County is going. Well, 
Rosie? All right. Yeah, I'm here. Advancing on to Chippewa County. Um, go to the next slide. So the demographics of Chippewa County show that it's a middle-sized um, population county in the UP. And it varies by only a few hundred within the past few years. Um, one of the things we noticed, especially when we went and met with Jeff Hagen, who's the executive director of the Eastern UP Planning and Development Commission, is that there is a lot of opportunities for educational attainment. But as you can see in the bottom of this graph, a lot of the residents and population have not taken full advantage of that. And so um, educational attainment um, amongst the residents is not particularly high. Um, some of the strengths of Chippewa County are its location um, near Lake Superior. Can we go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, it's a high tourist destination, and there's a lot of summer camping, um, as well as a lot of winter sports. The um, Chippewa County really appeals to tourism by hosting a lot of um, events. They host an international bridge walk, Engineers Day. They have a powwow and the Chippewa County Fair, as well as the International I-500. Chippewa County also has a lot of research bases and opportunities for industrial exploration. They have the Sault Ste. Marie Advanced Resources and Technology Incorporated. They also are the home to Lake Superior State University, so they have an education center as well as a product development center. And then they also have an industrial incubator. And so those, among, along with the international trade access through Canada, really opens up the door for Chippewa County and economic development. Some of the things Chippewa County could work on in areas of advancement are more use of their education centers. So they have LSSU located there, and residents could take the opportunity um, to gain some more education. As well, when we were talking with uh, Jeff Hagen, he was telling us about how their main goal is to attract more businesses into the Chippewa County and Sault Ste. Marie. And then in conjunction with those businesses, they'd have more chance for higher paid employment opportunities. And Jeff was saying that they do have businesses that are looking um, to move into Chippewa County. And so hopefully in the next few years, things will progress and we'll be able to gain some more jobs through those opportunities. Thank you. Okay, next we have Delta County. And Delta County has a population of just over 37,000. And that comes from the census. Um, there is also a median household income of about $42,500 per year. If you look below at the photo, um, this is a picture of um, New Page Corporation, which is the paper mill located in Escanaba. This is the largest employer in the county. Um, another interesting statistic about the county is that 91.7% of individuals 25 or over have a high school diploma. As far as strengths for Delta County are concerned, um, recreation opportunities are definitely plentiful. Um, just like many of the other counties in the Upper Peninsula, there are um, countless campgrounds and um, trails and other opportunities, especially for Delta County, the coastline. Because it's located on um, Lake Michigan, there are a lot of opportunities to um, recreate there. Um, the commute time for uh, individuals are generally is generally less than 15 minutes. And this kind of just shows that people can live and work in Delta County. There are many educational opportunities. Um, some of which include the Bay Area Community College, Delta Schoolcraft, Intermediate School District Career Technical Center, and another educational opportunity would include the Michigan State University Extension site. The biggest area for advancement in Delta County that we have identified is room for educational attainment. Um, according to michiganbusiness.org, only 18. 11% of individuals have a bachelor's degree or higher. And if you look just at the picture there, um, that's just a picture of Bay College. Like I said, that is in Delta County, in Escanaba, in the largest 
um, city of Delta County. And it would be a great thing for more individuals in the county to be taking care or be taking um, advantage of this opportunity. Margo? Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. So I looked at Dickinson County and the land mass there is close to 800 square miles. It's interesting to note that 65% of the land is designated for forest, recreation, or public hunting grounds. The population demographics are pretty consistent with the rest of the UP and the labor force. Of course, the unemployment rate is low relatively. Um, when we talk about strengths in Dickinson County, it's important to talk about Iron Mountain and it's its designation as a Michigan Main Street City by the Michigan Housing and Development Authority. That's a very interesting program launched to uh, focus on historic restoration, which leads to economic development. So the program asks that you hire a person who is focused solely on development of the Main Street community. Um, the economic motto in Iron Mountain is stability through diversity, so of course, they are focusing on bringing new industry and a variety of um, employers to the area. It's also important to note that tourism is the second fastest growing industry there. Um, I live in Virginia, and I can tell you that if I'm standing in another room from the television, I recognize the Pure Michigan commercial. Um, that seems to be a very effective ad campaign. There's a strong emotional attachment to those ads, and um, they really make you want to go to Michigan. So. That seems to be working. Um, it's also important to note that Iron Mountain is fiscally neutral, um, so it's a great selling point for industry that the community has natural resources, uh, transportation, and is on fiscally solid ground. Kim? Yes. Uh, hi. Kim Corcoran for Gogebic uh, County. Um, some of the high points I'd like to talk about is when we look at the demographics, we see that over time there's been a decline in the population, pretty much steady since the 1930s. The cities in Gogebic County are, were typically boom towns where their focus was on mining, logging, and railroads. Uh, the in, uh, income growth rate of 26% is much higher than the state rate of 8.5%. This can be seen mostly in the 50,000 or higher um, category. 26.4% of the population has some education beyond high school. Bogibi County is eighth out of the 82 counties in Michigan. As far as strengths, tourism, there are four seasons of activities. We have a motorized and non-motorized sport, so if you're into uh, snowmobiling or skiing or ice fishing, cross-country skiing, UTVing, ATVing, hiking, biking. Uh, there's all kinds of trail systems and um, activities that can meet those needs. It also relates to the biggest part of the labor force being the service industry. 78% of the workforce lives and works in the county, along with 26% uh, having an educated uh, education beyond high school indicates oh. that there's a skilled, okay? skilled and dedicated workforce. Uh, Gogebic Community College is also located in the county and it has the potential to increase the marketability of the workforce and strengthen ties between the youth and potential employers. Uh, during my research I've seen a lot of placemaking strategies that are emer emerging. They are focusing on new streetscapes and complete streets concept. There's been a collaboration between the communities as far as establishing and maintaining motorized and non-motorized trail systems and promoting those. There seems to be a lot of community events that are collaborated between the cities to avoid competition. The area is definitely rich in history. It, it is an asset, but it should also be developed a little bit more. Um, interesting point, home value rate is up 70%, probably due to the fact that most homes were built prior to 1940 and a few new homes increase this value. Areas for advancement, uh, there should be uh, more of a focus on the entrepreneurial draw. This new workforce can work anywhere they want, so there should be more place-making strategies 
to create a place, a community that people want to be and take a look at improving new quality housing, especially rental units for this entrepreneurial workforce that want to come and check out your community. Um, a lot of the cities in the Gibbet County struggle to retain their own identity, but there should be more of a collaboration. Uh, collaboration to draw an industry as a whole with incentives to share services throughout the community and combine shrinking schools to provide uh, increased programming for our children. And that's kind of the focus. We really need to uh, retain the youth. We have a, a shrinking population. It really needs to stabilize. So there should be an increased engagement between local government college level school uh, children, high school children, and incorporate such initiatives like Town Down to understand what their needs and wants are for the younger generation in order to retain them. We really need to get the youth engaged with our communities. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, next is Houghton County. Um, Houghton County is, follows the common theme throughout other counties in the UP that they're rich in, in natural resources. Um, they have a population of about 36,000 people in the county, about 14,000 households. Um, important to note that they have a strong uh, median household income of 34,000 approximately. And 27.7% of their um, workforce has a bachelor's degree or more. Um, that's largely due to Michigan Tech University being, being in the uh, Houghton. Uh, the primary age in the region is 20 to 29 years old, um, so there's a thriving workforce in that area. Uh, the area is rich with history, uh, as I mentioned, natural beauty and strong communities, uh, kind of focused around uh, helping one another, healthy tourism through all four seasons. Uh, the Houghton County features a great fall color tour, as well as um, snowmobile trails like the rest of the UP as well, um, summer, summer festivals, uh, there's a strawberry festival every year in, in Houghton County as well as a bridge fest and many other uh, popular recreation uh, facilities there. Um, Tech, Michigan Technological University, as I mentioned, is in the uh, largest city of the county, which is Houghton, and they are a research leader. They're producing uh, engineers and, and many graduates that, that become leaders in their fields. Uh, the reason that this is, is vastly important for the areas that they are doing a lot, a tremendous amount of community partnership. Uh, they're working with local businesses um, to really advance uh, what's offered in the area. It's quite the rural community, but they're doing, doing things that are making national news, uh, which is important for, for strategic growth. Um, as I mentioned, they have highly educated uh, talent pool. Um, they go through a lot of experiential training. Um, at the university there, so they're, they are a strong workforce that uh, businesses sh should definitely tap into. Um, there is also projected population growth over the next five years. Some of the areas of advancement um, would be more collaborative efforts between the community and Michigan Tech. Local businesses should focus on, on tapping that resource, uh, working in conjunction with them to, to advance uh, the infrastructure of the, of the area. Uh, in some of the conversations with many folks from the county, they are lacking um, some of the technological resources such as bandwidth for um, network connections to the internet um, that they should work in collaboration with Michigan Tech to, to um, increase their ability to, to grow. Um, they should also look at uh, promoting businesses that, that provide products and services that are lacking in the area. Um, they have a bit of a transportation issue being as far north as they are, but that can be com combated with products and services that serve the, the greater region. Hello, I did um, Iron County. Um, the 2013 estimated population was 11,516. Um, in 2012, the median household income was $35,551. Um, and the percentage of people that attained a high school education um, that were 25 years or older was around 80, 89%. Some of their strengths um, is culture and tourism, like every county in the UP. Mm -hmm. um, they have five annual events that I noted um, as being their biggest um, or best um, events 
Heritage Day, which is in May, the rodeo, the UP Rodeo Championship, uh, which is in July, which is also in conjunction with the rodeo concert, the county fair in August, and the Museum Fine Arts Show in August as well. The areas of advancement, um, the educational attainment of bachelor's degree or higher from 2008 to 2012 is around 17%, which is drastically lower than what I would believe that Iron County would want it to be. Um, transportation routes for commercial cargo, they have two airports that can hold commercial cargo, uh, the railway, and then roads, which most of them are two-lane highways. Hi, my name is Hannah Lewis, and I'll be talking about Keweenaw County. Um, as you can see from this graph, um, the number of households hasn't changed from 2000 to 2012. I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, the population has, um, but the number of households hasn't. And this information is coming from the U.S. Census. Um, Keweenaw County has the smallest population in the UP. Um, and they're the most northern county. Um, you can see that the um, median household income increased pretty dramatically from 2000 to 2012. So that's good to see. And you can see that throughout the income distribution as well. Um, in 2000, 61% of the households made under $35,000 a year. And then um, that dropped drastically uh, in 2012 to 39 percent of the households. Um, and then you can see the increase in the number of households that have $75,000 of, of income per year. Um, and then for the um, educational attainment, the percentages of people with, um, with an associate's degree, um, you know, at least um, 12 years of education, so high school degree, was 34 um, percent. And they have a fairly good population of people who are uh, college graduates. So the strengths that um, Keweenaw County has, like many or all of the um, other UP counties, is that they have Lake Superior or, you know, a large body of water, smaller inland lakes, forests, hills, mountains. Um, things that are significant assets to them as far as tourism goes. Um, I listed some of the events that happen in Keweenaw County, um, and I would note that a lot of the events are um, that Keweenaw County puts on are collaborations between Keweenaw County and Houghton County. They do a lot together. Um, they share school systems. There's only one school in, um, in Keweenaw County, but a lot of the education is shared between Keweenaw and Houghton. Um, and then you can see that there are 23 parks and beaches, 10 waterfalls, scenic drives, lighthouses, guided tours. They have Mount Bohemia, which attracts tourists from all over the country as well. Areas of advancement, um, like I said, they don't have their own vocational or trade school or community college that's nearby. The closest universities are Michigan Technological University in Houghton and Finlandia University, but neither of those really serve a purpose of a vocational or trade school. Um, and then they definitely um, have some struggles with public transportation. Um, there really isn't any public trans transportation in Keweenaw County. Um, and obviously limited access to highways and airports. There's just not a lot of infrastructure there. But I would say that also lends itself to the beauty of the area and the potential for, um, for tourism and um, using the, the, um, the resources that are already there as far as the, um, the mountains and the lakes go. <laughs> um, and then, like Paul was talking about, the infrastructure for technological advancements they don't have as much there as that, that they could as far as like the fiber optic cables with high enough bandwidth um, for the companies that are coming in in Houghton area. Um, they really need more than what's there. Uh, so that would be a good area to work on. Thank you. Oh. Hello. 
Hi, Carmen. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all the help on the project. I'm covering Lewis County. Um, as you can see, uh, Lewis County is very lightly populated, just over 24 households, which has remained steady uh, over the past 10 years. Um, a, a very, I don't know, good statistic is the household income growth over that time. Uh, it's grown almost 25% in the last 10 years. Um, it, it's pretty evenly spread out, too, um, with it being a little heavier on the lower end of the spectrum. Um, the educational attainment. Um, those who have not received a diploma um, it is right around the national average. Um, then you look at those who have received some, at least some college education that's somewhat below the national average. Um, you can see those uh, getting bachelor's degree or higher is just at uh, about 15 percent. Okay, the strengths. Uh, don't look at uh, the limited number of strengths that I have listed here as a lack of strengths for Lewis County. Um, I was merely looking at what I viewed as the greatest opportunity for Lewis County to expand in uh, an economic uh, approach, or economic approach. Um, and believe it or not, it would be the natural environment. Um, the, the 15,000 acres of inland lakes, 31 miles of Lake Superior shoreland, uh, or shoreline, 600 miles of rivers and streams, and 300,000 acres of public access land uh, really provide Luce County uh, with, a, with a great opportunity um, to expand, to draw um, potential um, households to actually live there, but also um, to expand their tourism base. Um, areas of advancement. Obviously, number one, uh, the travel tourism industry. I think um, whether it's uh, camping, expanding trails, uh, promoting outdoor activities like hiking, uh, fishing, uh, these can be year-round activities. Um, they create a ripple and multiplier effect for other businesses to come in. Um, it also is a, is a huge draw for people looking to live in the area. Um, uh, the education, I think that's a huge one. Um, to get those, uh, the percentage of the population who is receiving at least some college uh, to go up and to stay in the area would be, be a great benefit for the county, and this can be done through whatever it, whether it's incentives or access. Um, and to go with that, uh, the retention and increase the allure of the area, um, especially to the younger generation. Um, I'm sure that a lot of the uh, young people living in there get a college education, but whether they come back or not is, is, a, is a question. So creating an environment where they uh, want to stay uh, through social activities and, and better paying jobs or jobs that better fit their, uh, their education. And um, by br this could also help bring uh, new people to the area. All right. Uh, I'm Seth. My partner, um, Carrie, is uh, joining us off-site. Carrie, are you there? Yes, hi, Seth. How are you doing, Carrie? Good. Okay, so we have Mackinac County. Um, just to start off some demographics, um, as you can see, um, number of households uh, dropped quite a bit, um, you know, almost 1,000 uh, from 2000 to 2012, um, whereas the uh, median household income uh, increased um, from around 33 to um, 36. Um, if you, you can see the breakdown of the earnings, those remain pretty consistent um, within those. Uh, but there was definitely the changes from the number of households to um, the amount of earnings as well. Um, and then also workforce education and attainment. We'll go on into that a little bit more, um, but you can see the majority of the um, education attainment is some college or less. Okay. Right. Obviously, go ahead. Um, Mackinac County is um, rich in history with 
uh, Mackinac Island, having Fort Mackinac, and several historical locations, um, which is a major draw to Mackinac County. Um, some noted strength here, um, like, like, like a lot of uh, people that have covered the other counties in, in the UP, there's, a, there's definitely not a lack of natural resources. Um, within two hours, uh, Mackinac County, you can be in Hiawatha National Forest, uh, Picture Grass, which is a national lake shore, and that draws a, a huge crowd of uh, people from all over the country uh, to go uh, backpacking and camping in that area. And then Taquamnon Falls State Park is also a, a national draw as well. Um, and that's a year-round uh, activity that, that people can do in the summer and uh, for camping and in the winter for uh, snowmobiling. And there's also, uh, not noted on there, is the Lational Islands, which is uh, an area that's uh, also um, highly populated, mostly in summer months, uh, for biking, camping, boating. So that area is uh, a great resource for Mackinac County. Um, other events, um, our other strengths, I guess, are the, the events in Mackinac County. Um, we have the, the Mackinac Bridge Walk, which draws people from um, all over the state, including the governor. Um, and then we have the Chicago to Mac, uh, which is a sailboat race. Um, that's an annual event and uh, is very successful at, at getting um, uh, tourism in that area. Um, several other events, uh, the half marathon um, and the 5.7 mile run slash walk and then the St. Ignace Car Show is another uh, annual event that isn't listed on there that draws a lot of people to St. Ignace, which is Mackinac County's largest city. Um, other great strengths, access to higher education. There's, uh, as you can see, uh, a couple colleges right in that area, Bay Mills Community College, and then Lake Superior State University um, in Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, North Central Machine College is located in Petoskey, which is um, Petoskey's about 20 miles south of the Mackinac Bridge, so it's in that um, general area. Also not listed on uh, as it's higher, higher education is a wooden boat building school in Cedarville and Relational Culinary School. Um, <coughs> so there are a lot of strengths to Mackinac County. I have a little in bit of an echo, so I'm sorry. You're fine. Um, in terms of areas of advancement, um, dependency on the service industry uh, due to seasonal tourism, um, if you look at how many jobs are dependent on tourism, um, you know, 2,056 out of the 4,400 jobs, um, such a huge number, um, and I think we could see this year especially um, how the weather and other things affected, you know, tourism, um, you know, especially places like Mackinac Island. Um, uh, the low percentage of workforce with a degree past high school, uh, that's lowering the average income. Um, so like I said earlier, only 20% of the workforce in Mackin Mackinac County has earned an associate degree or higher. Um, and then also the drop in new construction and manufacturing jobs. Um, if you look at the numbers as well, between 2000 and 2012, um, there were 585 jobs, and then those dropped to 392 in construction, and then went from 197 down to 137 um, in manufacturing as well. Okay, Chelsea? Hi everyone, I'll be talking about Menominee County. Um, Menominee County was founded in 1861 and has a population of about 23,791. It is located on the southernmost part of the Upper Peninsula and on the Wisconsin border. Menominee County is also known as where the best of Michigan begins. Nine members compose the governmental structure for the county board and the largest city within this county is Menominee itself. Some of the strengths it has a vast array of recreational activities, including hunting, camping, fishing, and snowmobiling, among many more. The culture can be observed through concerts in the park every Thursday evening in the summer. The annual Waterfront Festival and Brown Trout Derby bring a lot of people into Menominee itself. Menominee County offers numerous opportunities for the pursuit of higher education. 
community members have the opportunity to work with different colleges within Wisconsin, um, which is bordering in our Wisconsin border, it's Marinette, so which are the University of Marinette itself and Northwestern Technological College. Areas for advancement include the possibility of an additional, additional manufacturing company and an increase in job opportunities for the members of the community with advanced degrees. Within the county, only 20.20% of the workforce has some form of college or technical training, while 46.40% 40, 40 of people only have a high school diploma. Good morning, I'm Lizzie Corsair with Ontonagon County. I grew up in Ontonagon, I graduated from there in 2007, so I was excited to take a closer look at some of the demographics of the area. The population in 2011 was 6,413. That's about a 1,400 decrease from 2000. Um, Smurfit Stone Mill, located in Ontonagon, which is the county seat, was a major employer and it closed in 2009. So that um, is definitely a contributing factor. The number of households is about 3,300. And of those, 52% um, have a household income at about under, or under 35,000. The workforce um, education attainment, so that's anyone in the workforce above the age of 25, 40.9% have a high school diploma. Um, and you can see the numbers for associate's degree, bachelor's degrees, and then advanced graduate degrees are, are much less. So some of the strengths, um, affordable housing in, in Otsnagan County, the median gross rent is $415, average house price is about $69,000, so that's definitely a perk when you're looking to um, bring companies into the area and you're looking to find housing for your employees, uh, especially families at that rate. There are a number of vocational and technical training centers located within the county in areas such as accounting, healthcare, construction trades, management services, and computer programming. Um, those are held at the high schools in Ontonagon as well as in Ewan Trail Creek and at the surrounding community college. Um, speaking of which, there are two universities and one community college within a 2.5 hour radius. Um, this is a strength definitely for employees looking to continue their education um, or take one or two classes um, in a specific area, uh, as well as for spouse um, spouse employment. And then Ontonagon County has an opportunity for destination marketing. I know this has been mentioned by a number of my cohorts, but there are miles of Lake Superior shoreline, Porcupine Mountain State Park, extension trail, extensive trail systems for snowmobiling, hiking, and biking. Um, it's a beautiful lo location to visit and to live. Um, there's also a rich cultural history grounded in the mining and, and lumber industries. So a few areas of advancement um, that I had identified were increasing the availability of career positions to attract residents with advanced degrees and bachelor's degrees, strengthening the relationship between the school district, local employers um, throughout the county, and Michigan Technological University in Houghton, or the Michigan University in Marquette, and the Gogebic Community College in Ironwood to cultivate a talent pool with strong local roots. Um, pursuing downtown development opportunities in Ontonagon, which like I said is the county seat and the only village, as well as in the surrounding communities to create a multifunctional place to shop, work, dine, and live, and I would also add stay. There are a number of um, cabins uh, throughout the county, but in the downtown areas there isn't much in the way of lodging. Uh, and then creating a centralized and engaged research and development center to frequently and consistently collect uh, this data that we've been looking at, like Dr. JJ had mentioned before, I know that that was a, a challenge for a lot of our areas. We were finding these data points, but in a lot of different forms from a lot of different places. And then again to increase the um, niche marketing efforts that draw attention to the natural features of Onsonagan County and doing so on a county-wide wide basis. Thank you. Looking next at Schoolcraft County. In Schoolcraft County, we've got just one incorporated town that would be the county seat of Manistique. The overall county population at 8,000 uh, residents, and then the uh, medium household income at just over 37,000. That number, um, strong for the UP, but overall compared to the national average, quite low. Um, home ownership rate and in individuals with a high school diploma, both of those numbers um, in the high 80% range, um, both very strong. And then 
uh, at just over seven people per square mile. It's about as rural as you can possibly get. The strength of the county consists of the Hiawatha National Forest, as well as they have many different other activities you can do in the winter, as well as the summer. 83% um, of the population uh, only commutes about 29 minutes or less to work, and then there's more than 50 miles of coastline along the Lake Michigan. And they also have a great county fair, as well as a wonderful festival that happens every year in mid-July, which is a folk fest, and that's been going on for about 11 years, and it's very interesting. And then for the areas of advancement, like a lot of other counties, um, we're looking at a really low percent percentage of the population that has a bachelor's degree or higher. But beyond that, there's uh, limited opportunities for educational advancement in the uh, with a vocational center they used to have in the county that closed down a couple years ago. Um, and just where they're located, it, it's really far away from other vocational opportunities. So for someone to, to pursue that, they'd have to um, leave the county and have a significant commute. So without that right now, it's um, difficult, which is difficult for people to, to obtain that and, and learn a, a trade that they can use for long-term employment. Okay, so we've had all of our students present a little bit about each of the counties that they have worked with. And so I really would like to thank our community partners, the Lake Superior Community Partnership. And we had Amy and Derek and Denise, so a shout out to you guys if you're still listening. We really appreciate all the information that you helped us find. And then absolutely the members of the Upper Peninsula Collaborative Development Council, which is referred to as the UPCDC. And we also want to thank our project funders, which is MSU and also NMU for various portions of the project. Um, as far as contact information, we would love for you to get in touch with us if you have any questions or comments about what we've done today. We would entertain any questions. Um, and I really just do want to thank all of the students for their participation. This has been a really long, involved, detailed project. And when all of the revisions are made to all of the information, this information will be available in really snappy, jazzy PowerPoint presentation that we've put together. And uh, we want to thank LSCP for putting together those marketing materials for us so that we can use that to, to make all of this data and all of these numbers um, real snappy looking. And so that will be available on NMU's website. And we will also be distributing all of this information to the various county um, EDCs so that they have access to it. And so one of the nice things about what we did was we added all of the source information. So I know a lot of data collection projects in the past that have been done haven't included that source information. So this will give not only individuals that are looking at the information, but also the counties themselves the ability to go back and check those sources. And if they want to update them, they can at any point. Um, right, right now, we'd like to entertain any questions that any of y'all might have out in our virtual audience. We have an audience here at NMU. Do we have any questions? You can type them in. Jennifer? Yes. This is Jennifer Bruin. Yes. Wow, great presentation. Um, I'm thinking to myself, 16 students, 15 counties, 1,200 hours of, of work. I think that's what you quoted was 1,200 hours. Huge undertaking. But what an amazing job. If I were a site selector, I would definitely locate my headquarters in the UP. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is really very helpful. I think that this is possibly a model that could be used in other regions, you know, multi-county regions um, with websites that are desperately needing this type of data. It's fresh and updated and definitely accessible. Well, thank you so much. One of the things that we identified during this project was that what you would think of as typical professional resources, 
um, that might be in really large metro areas is not really accessible in a lot of these rural counties. For example, several of the counties that we dealt with either had very, very limited EDC staff and meaning limited two to three to five hours per week. Um, that's per week. Or we also had counties that didn't have active working websites. And so trying to locate information, if you think sort of in this the virtual world that we live in, everything's on the internet, well that isn't necessarily the case in the UP. So if you look at this project in another region of the country, it would have a completely different complexion. And so I think one of the things that was very unique about it was that we actually traveled to the communities. And I think what really, and I think the students would agree with me, what really was exciting was at the end of the day, we had organizations that were a little bit hesitant about providing information to us or participating. And once we went and sat in their office and visited with them and got to know them, there was a completely different complexion and a definitely a willingness to say, yes, this is something that we value and this is something that we really want to participate in. So I think for future uh, projects as we move forward, I think it really has been a wonderful component to actually travel to the county. And if you think about that the UP is, what, 300 plus thousand, was it acres? Um, it's quite a large geographic area, and it can take, what, eight hours to go from end to end, and so driving distance. And so if you're thinking about just commuting or just trying to get around and get this information, um, I think it's very challenging. I think one of the things that we noticed was that the information is there if you go to the county and you can identify the right person. Um, this information is, for example, in the county courthouse and you just have to track down the people that know it. And so that was really a worthwhile um, project because now we know who those people are. And so now we're in a better position to update this information so that others can learn and know how wonderful the UP is. And we hope that by knowing how fantastic this organization, I'm sorry, this community is, that they will want to relocate business or start business or expand what they already have. The purpose of the REI University Center is to help communities that have limited resources. So this is a wonderful example of that, of how you've been able to really leverage um, a higher ed institution's uh, resources to help out your, your region. Thank you. I think, the, I think the community capacity was significantly different than what we as students and myself anticipated when we first started. And so I think what we did realize was that the, the organizations and the communities out there have uh, limited staffing and they have limited organizational yes. capacity to put this type of information together. So we really do thank you for allowing us to, to work on this. I do have one question, and it really is to all of the presenters. Um, I know that one of them mentioned the lack of um, young talent and retention and attraction efforts that need to be conducted, and maybe several of you mentioned it, but one of the counties, I think it was Luce County. Um, and so I'm curious, how many of the students on this team are from the UP? I did hear a couple of them say that they were born and raised there. Um, but how many of them are now feeling maybe drawn to, you know, planting roots and, and starting up a family or um, relocating if they did come from out of state or from the lower peninsula? <laughs> well, I think one of the things that we have identified is that as far as uh, business and um, community capacity, living in the UP and um, sort of getting those professional type jobs that students are very interested in right out of college has definitely been a challenge. And I think that is, is probably one of the big areas of advancement that we would look at as far as those students. We actually have quite a few students that are from the UP community. One of the things that you find historically, um, not necessarily with our students um, in this class, but sort of historically, is what you see is a lot of people will, will live and work here, grow up here, 
maybe be educated at NMU or Michigan Tech and have a tendency oftentimes to move away for several years and gain some um, sort of what you would consider outside world experience or additional professional experiences and then have a tendency to relocate back um, to the UP. And I think what's really interesting and, and somewhat exciting about that is you wind up with this whole fresh influence of ideas and um, knowledge base that people when they move away to other communities and then bring back. We've actually had quite a few students in the program that have gone off after they graduate with an undergrad degree, have gone to other countries, have lived and worked um, internationally, and then bring those experiences back to the UP. And so I think that's really exciting as well. Yes, it is. Okay, well it looks like it's about 11 o'clock. Did we have any other questions in your chat box or comments? Or? Okay. Well, thank you, NMU team, for taking the time to share your project with us, especially considering this is a difficult or stressful time of the year for you guys, end of semester. I'm sure some of you... It's only finals week. That's okay. <laughs> I know. But it's a, it was a great presentation. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the webinar uh, was recorded, and it will be available at the reicenter.org website. And it sounds like... Um, maybe that you'll have lots of information on your website too and maybe we'll share the recording. Um, so feel free to share the link to the recording once it's uploaded. Uh, it will have to be transcribed for the hearing impaired so that takes us maybe a week or two um, but it should be up soon. And as a reminder to folks if you're interested tomorrow from 2 to 3 p.m. Dr. Davia Downey um, an assistant professor of public administration also at Grand Valley State University will join us to present her team's project, the Montcalm Business Incubator Feasibility Project. So thank you again, Jennifer and, and students, and enjoy your summer. Thanks, Jen. Appreciate it. Okay, good luck on your finals. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>